guys, it's April. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Pat for um, asking me to uh, make this project for her. And um, it is a supporter file. This is a picnic caddy. And I just wanted to go over the layout. All of the brown pieces in this file are from your 2mm chipboard. You can use 1.5, um, but you may have to adjust uh, some of your uh, pieces here. The scores are on there just for a guide. Um, you can fold them in half and adjust them any way that you need. You may have to, uh, they may just cover a little less area. It probably won't be noticeable. Um, all the dark gray pieces in here are your outside decorative pieces. And all of the light gray are your inside decorative pieces. Now I am cutting mine. I've got these laid out on the screen. I have attached them so that they uh, cut efficiently. I am just using the same pattern paper uh, for my uh, hinges as I do for the decorative part. That way it will blend in. But if you want to two-tone it and do a different color, you can certainly do that. Make it your own and choose your own patterns. Again, all of the dark gray are your outside decorative pieces. All of the light gray are inside pieces and hinges. All of these little pieces like this are all hinges. These are all your main decorative. The score lines on these pieces, do not fold them. That's a guide of where to put your dividers. And we'll get into that as we make it. I am making this on blind faith, so hopefully... If mine doesn't work, guys, don't fret. I will fix the file before I release it to you guys. This is, I'm doing a, one of those projects where I make it and I'm putting it together as I test the file. So I just wanted to be sure that you guys knew that if I run into problems with assembly, I will fix it before you get the file and you won't have that issue. I have uh, already cut everything. Now, this did cut quickly because there's not a whole lot of cutting. You will need your purple mat, your purple strong grip Cricut mat, okay? Um, make sure that you're using that when you're cutting chipboard, guys. It's going to give you the best, um, the best cut. Uh, if you don't use it, and I have this piece, it did move slightly, so my cut was a little off but I can make it work because I caught it in time. Um, it started to shift because it was cut all the way through. You need to check this at every pass, starting at about pass six, okay? Because when you're doing just square shapes like this without a whole lot of detail, they will cut quick and easy. Your knife blade will cut through a little bit quicker. Mine was saying like three hours when it first went in. And I mean, you can watch that rapidly drop as it starts to cut. Uh, so don't pay any attention to your estimated time and your passes. Most likely, you're not going to cut any 24 passes on it unless you've got a really, really dull knife blade. Uh, I've cut several projects with mine, uh, so mine blade was not new, but I did notice that it was cutting completely through. Some of them, the basic square pieces were cutting through at about seven passes, and some of these with the curved area was cutting through at about 13 passes. So make sure that you're looking and you're checking after every pass to make sure that it's cut through. And if it looks like it's cut through on the edge, I kind of generally let it go one more. And if it didn't cut all the way through, usually you can just take your True Control um, knife blade and go right in because it'll be just a paper chad, just barely hanging. If it's cut through on most areas, but you have one little area that's not, you should be good. I like to use the blue painter's tape. Some people like to use washi tape and stuff. I don't. Uh, it can cause, I notice that my washi tape comes loose and then it can cause your material to shift on the mat, and that will cause a bad cut. I also use my brayer, and I brayer this onto my mat before I tape it down. That will help it stick, and it won't shift. I use the one and a half inch wide painter's tape. I make sure I get a good amount on the uh, chipboard itself and half of it on the mat. That way I know I've got a good hold, and it has less 
it's least likely to shift at that point. And I, I get a good cut. This one got a miscut on it because it did shift a little bit because I did not tape it down well. I had one edge that was off. Now, when you peel your painter's tape off, don't peel it from the edge back. You will cause your chipboard to peel. Peel it from the inside out to remove it, okay? And it won't damage the edge of your chipboard. Um, super simple, super easy. Cricut does all the rest of the work for you. It did take five sheets of chipboard, which is one pack. And if you feel like you might have a miscut, go ahead and get a second pack so you have some backup. Okay, um, I believe it's on sale right now at Cricut. So go in there and jump in there and, and order a bunch of this because I, I love the Cricut chipboard. If you're using an off-brand chipboard, you're not doing yourself any favors. I'm just going to say I have tested it. It's dusty. It's messy. It causes the Cricut to jam. Your knife blade will get pinched and all of that great stuff. It will also get pinched if you're not using a strong grip mat and things are shifting. So make sure that you... Uh, use the Cricut stuff when it comes to things like this, and you'll be much happier with your project. Um, I've got all my pieces cut. I'm doing a 4th of July theme. Well, not really 4th of July, but patriotic, um, because most of the times if I'm going to use a picnic carrier, it's going to be for a family function, and that's usually Memorial Day, Labor Day, 4th of July, things like that. But you can use any theme that you want. So one pack of the Cricut chipboard to get this file. You're going to need, and I printed my paper. I got this from Design Bundles. I will leave a link down below. Um, you're going to have four sheets for your outer, four 12 by 12 sheets. I just printed it, and then I cut it. I didn't do print and cut. I printed my paper, and then I cut it, and I used craft paper. Okay? It's going to match perfectly any edges and things like that. So, I used craft paper on mine for this one, and printed my paper, and then I cut it. The inside pieces, you're going to need six sheets, I believe it is. Um, so, ten sheets of printed paper in all. And then you're going to need some little wooden caps. These are dowel caps. And I got the acorn. They come in different shapes. You can get whatever you want. You're going to need some of those. Uh, and they need to fit your dowel. Now, my dowel is a let me see if i can get this in there because i haven't cut it yet it is three eighths and it's a 36 inch stick if you can find a 12 inch stick that will probably do but i'm going to cut it i don't know the length i'm going to cut it yet i did test my cap and put a mark on there right there so i know how far my cap will go on and i need to add that twice to whatever width is in between and i believe it's going to be 10 and a half inches but we're gonna double check it. So I would cut this at 10, 11 inches is what I would need to cut this at so that my caps meet up on the edge of that handle. So you're gonna need those. And I haven't decided, but I'm, I had these in my stash. You can still get them. They're just um, gold flakes. You can get them at the craft store. Uh, you can get them from scrapbook.com, uh, Tonic Studios. You, or Amazon, I think Nuvo, uh, yes, Nuvo makes them, and I think even Stampin' Up, I'm not sure. Uh, it might be close to my heart, but you can get those. And then I'm going to use the Deco Foil Gel Duo, because you can use this with heat or no heat. And what I'm going to do, I'm thinking, if I don't leave this plain, I will seal it with some kind of uh, adhesive or glue, seal my edges, but I'm thinking after I get it all put together, all the exposed edges here, I may paint this on, let it dry, and then stick this on and then seal it. So I still haven't decided. We'll see as we go, just to make it pretty. All right, so let's go ahead and get started putting this together. And I am going to these curved pieces are your front and back these two pieces are your inside dividers you can set them to the side for now these are also inside dividers you can set those to the side and you can set all of your decorative pieces for the outside 
to the side for now. Um, yeah, just gonna move those over. And then our inside pieces. Now, one of these, one of these has score lines on it and one doesn't. We need to keep those separated. I'm gonna stack all of these pieces out. And I think that's the one with my score line. Here, I'll see here. We'll get, I'll find them here in a minute. I'm not gonna make you guys watch me search for the one with the score line on it. So what I'm going to do first, going to set those up, need all of these little pieces here. These are your hinges, okay? And I am going to start with the long ones, okay? And all of these are folded in half. If you can't see your score line, don't worry about it. You're just gonna fold all of these in half. So I am going to go off camera and every one of these hinges, I am going to fold in half with the pretty side to the inside, okay? And we're just gonna fold them down. And I, there's no need for you guys to watch me fold every single one of those. And they don't have to be perfect. If they're off a little bit, it's not going to hurt a thing. So get all of those folded, and then we'll come back and we'll start assembly. Okay, so I have my four long hinges folded. And what we're going to do is we're going to place one. This is our bottom piece. This is just your big 10 and a half inch square. And... Um, Remember when you're cutting your chipboard, guys, to move your star wheels all the way to the right so you don't get impressions on here. I forgot to tell you that. And also, um, this is the max. It's going to hold a 10-inch plate, maybe a 10 and a quarter. This is cut at 10 and a half because our material is 11 inches wide so that our star wheels don't damage it. And we have to leave that quarter inch on each side for um, cutting area. So that is why this is the maximum size you can make this. And you can use this for craft too. It doesn't have to be picnic. But I'm using art glitter glue here. Um, you can get this from artglitter.com. There's no glitter in it. Dries matte, dries clear. I'm just gonna put it on one side of the hinge and you want your other side of the hinge to be up. And you're gonna bring that perfectly to the edge. Now, if you're hanging over on the ends, don't worry about it. We can trim that off. But you want that completely all the way up to that edge, perfectly even. I'm just gonna, and it's all right if some glue squishes out, it's all gonna get covered. Okay, so you're just gonna do this and you're gonna repeat it on all four sides. Now, if you've got a little bit hanging off here, you'll need your scissors or your trim control knife handy and you're just going to snip anything that's hanging over any minute pieces you don't want it to interfere with your the way this goes together and then you're just going to walk your way around and right here you can see that it's overlapping so all i'm going to do is just trim this off you want to dry fit before you do this okay just going to bring it in and I cut that one a little too short. And it's okay if it's too short. You can see mine's shorter because I'm gonna have a piece over here. So we're just gonna bring that in. And again, we're gonna place that up. And go right out to the edge. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder and smear that glue around. Get it good and pressed. Make sure that edge is really good. It's very important that this meet that edge and be flush. You don't want it to overhang and you don't want it set too far in, okay? And then you're just gonna keep working around. And it's okay if you have a gap there, it's not going to matter, even if you use a different paper and it shows a little bit, it'll be okay. 
because you can use an acrylic paint and just dab in there the color of your paper and it'll never be seen. This is gonna be to the inside. Nobody's ever gonna see it down in there. And then this last one, dry fit it, and that fits perfectly fine. I only had to trim one. I trimmed it a little too much, but that's okay. I just don't want them to overlap because it will create bulk and you don't want any bulk. Okay, that's that step. Next, we're going to place in this piece to cover those hinges. I'm just gonna make sure that it fits. I think that I'm gonna have to trim this piece down. I'll be right back. I will go ahead and trim yours for you guys. I may leave this because I am using craft paper. And if you don't use craft paper, that might be the difference because, I mean, it's very minute. So I'm just going to take it, just trim just a sliver off, and I'll be right back. Okay. And I trimmed just a sliver off this edge and a sliver off this edge. And it seems to be fitting. When you do this on the side, you don't want it to bow up. I'm gonna take just another smidge off of there. Okay, much better. And guys, literally, this is all I trimmed. I mean, just a hair. And I'm gonna say that it's probably because I'm using craft paper, so it's a little bit thicker. It's gonna depend on your paper. Just make sure that when you fold these sides up, that this piece doesn't buckle up. You don't want it to you don't want it to have a bow in it like this where it's not laying flat. And then we're just going to glue this down. And I'm doing a fairly good amount of glue, but it may look heavier than it really is. Um, it's a very thin amount that I'm putting on there. And then I'm going to take my brayer, just because it's easier than doing the bone folder over the whole thing, but you can do both, do however you need. And we're gonna glue that piece down. Yeah. So now, this is where the tricky parts come in. We're going to put glue on this tab here and I'm gonna put a little bit down on this chipboard right here, just on that seam. Okay. And we're going to bring this piece in and we're going to glue it on. Okay, making sure that it's flush on both sides. And then I'm just gonna flip it up and I'm gonna take my bone folder and press that down. Now it's a little fragile at this point, but it's okay. Your hinge, once you get it on there, it's gonna hold it pretty good. I'm just checking my alignment here, making sure that it's flush on the bottom, and it is. And I'm just gonna let that sit and dry for a second. I'm gonna place my bottle back there so it can't flop anywhere. And we're going to get from our decorative outside piece we're going to get another long one and again these just fold right in half but actually they fold the opposite way i should know that by now you want your pretty side to the outside on when you fold these okay we're just gonna run that like so and we're gonna come over, and then this is going to hinge right here, and that's gonna help support that, okay? And you're just gonna glue that right onto that outside. 
and you're going to come over here and do your front piece and then we'll come back and do the sides. I'm not gonna make you watch me glue every little piece of this just for the time purpose of the video, but this is all I'm doing. You just saw me glue that this way. You're gonna do the same thing with the front over here. Then you're going to do your outside hinge for both sides and glue those on and then we'll come back. We'll see. But I'm just now putting my second hinge back here on this side and you can see that my paper is kind of bubbled up there it's not sticking yet and that's because I'm using craft paper it will stick I'm just gonna have to keep rubbing it um, I am using art glitter glue I did mention that before and the reason I'm using art glitter glue is because it dries quick it dries matte it dries clear and it doesn't have I mean it's a water base it has a water content to it but it's not a runny glue like Elmer's glue um, some glues can be too wet for chipboard because it is paper and it will swell um, if you get it too wet. So make sure you're using a good glue and not a cheap glue. Um, another good one is the Scotch glue. I believe um, Mary and Leo from Dreaming Tree and from SVG Cuts, they use the Scotch, um, but and it works well too. So you should have something that looks like this Just now. Just like we did this, we're gonna glue this piece on. You're going to run glue on the side of your chipboard here and on this side here. You're also going to run glue on this part of your paper. You're gonna pull this in, okay? And then you're going to take your inside. <clears throat> I actually, I'm gonna do my outside first. Then I'm gonna take my outside piece and I'm going to put that on the outside to help hold that up in there. Make sure that this piece is to the inside of this piece, just like this. You don't want it like this, it won't fit, it won't come together. You want it right to the inside on both sides, okay? Just like that. Hopefully that's, this is a large thing, so hopefully it's fitting in the camera here. So you're going to be gluing that right on there and then you're gonna do your outside hinges, and then we're gonna come in and do the inside hinges. And we're gonna repeat that on the other side as well. You should have the, the hinging part down by now. If you need instruction that I don't show, just send me a message, I'll be happy to help you. And I'm just getting that glue good and tacky. You can still move it around. You can still break it loose until you get these hinges on. And then you're pretty much a done deal. So I'm just making sure. These are just sliding down to the bottom of my table. Okay. So that they're even. And then I'm just bringing all of these in and making sure that everything is aligned smooth down properly and anything that is hanging over is snipped off and you can see I'm just barely snipping pieces just teeny tiny pieces and it does get messy you're going to get glue on your fingers and that's what you want you want to make sure that all your paper is adhering down that's going to give it its strength and now we're going to go back to our inside pieces I'm going to get two of those Inside, remember the pieces fold to the inside, outside, your pattern folds to the outside. I'm just gonna give those a rub with my bone folder. I may be off camera doing that, but you've seen me do that. And I will speed through parts of this video, as you saw, just so that we can save time. And I do go down each edge so that I can get, make sure that those corners get in there. And if you wanna do it and give it a minute, then you can do that. And that'll give it time to get good and tacky. And then we 
we're just gonna pop that hinge right in place. I should have dry fit it. I've got a little bit hanging over, but I can still reach it. Make It's gonna be important later that you dry fit, start dry fitting these pieces before you put your glue on them. And that fit down in there perfectly. I just got lucky. I've already put my glue on this side, so it's gonna be hard to dry fit. I'm just gonna flip it over to its side and rub. I'm just rubbing these down. So some of these you won't be able to see because the panels will be blocking them, but for the most part, you'll be able to see it. I'm just gonna snip that off while I can get to it. Going to, I think I'm just going to trim just a hair off of this one just before I put it on since I didn't dry fit it first. If it doesn't come all the way to the top, it's not a big deal. It's not going to show. Squished out glue won't hurt a thing. That just tells me that I do have edge to edge stick. Okay, now we're going to repeat that on the other side. So you can see here this outside hinge is done, this outside hinge is done, the insides are done. And now I'm going to do the finishing on this one. Let's see, long one here. And then we repeat the other side. Super, super easy. All right, I'll be back after I get that other side done. Okay, guys, it should be looking something like this now. It should have... I know that it's very difficult to see with these cameras sometimes, but all of your paper should be flattened down. If it's not, just go back and stick it. It should be getting tacky and sticking at this point. If not, shoot a little glue under it. Make sure everything is laying flat and all of your hinges are in the inside corners, the outside corners, and across the bottom. And then you can put your bottom piece on. So determine which is going to be your front, back, however you want to do that. And we're going to place this bottom piece right here on there. And we're going to glue that down. And that's all we're going to do. Let's see if I can get it. This camera raised a little bit for you guys for this project. But I'm just going to glue the bottom piece on. That's it. It's just the big square. All right. And then we'll come back and we'll start some more. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. And you can see that I've got that on the bottom. And we're just going to flip this over and glue it. Just so I can get it on camera, I'm going to do it this way. But you guys flip yours over and do that. And just get it all lined up like you want. And then I'm going to use my brayer because I can't, we can't turn this over because of the handles. So you want to make sure that all your corners and your edges are glued down really, really well. You don't want those lifting later on. So make sure that that glue gets distributed really well. And you'll have time to go back and see if, if you have an edge that hasn't stuck down. You'll be able to go back and shoot some glue under it with a fine tip and get up under there to seal that edge. And then I'm just gonna flip it over on its bottom and then I'm gonna use my brayer. And I'm gonna go inside. And that's gonna help that bottom stick down. Okay. Coming right along. So, next. Now we're gonna do these inside pieces. And you can see I go all the way down to the base. I have just a little bit of overhang. So I'm gonna go over to my trimmer and trim just a little bit off 
and trim a little bit at a time, guys, just very minute. Remember, trim very minute because you can take more off, you can't put it back. Okay, here we are. And you can see, uh, again, guys, I am just barely trimming this and I'm still gonna say that that is the paper thickness that I used. Um, and it can vary with the paper that you use. So just dry fit it and get it to fit. You're gonna do the same thing with this one. And again, you're only gonna take off the bottom because you want that top piece to come in here and you want it to fit. And the width of it is perfect. So I know that it is the size of that board, but we're gonna have to take a little off each side and the bottom um, because of paper and the thicknesses of the paper as it gets added to the inside. And it's gonna depend if you put this piece in first or these pieces in first. So I've already done these pieces, I've trimmed them, so I'm gonna put them in before I trim these pieces because if I do it the other way, then the thickness of this paper on each side will affect how that fits. So make sure that you're putting them in as you trim them slightly. And so I'm just going to go ahead and bring this one in. Again, I can't stress, guys, your edges and your corners on a project like this are very, very important because it's gonna get used. And if you have any loose edges, they're gonna pop up with use and you don't want that. slide that into place and then I'm just going to flip over and give it a rub. I'm going to rub it with my brayer and then I'm going to go in the corners with my bone folder making and around that bottom edge making sure that I get it all rubbed down on those edges because craft paper is funny about how it glues. Sometimes it takes a minute more than your regular card stocks for that glue to really adhere. I couldn't line that up perfectly again if I tried. But you don't want any big gobs of glue down in the bottom, but if you have a little bit, it won't hurt anything. It's just gonna seal those corners when it dries. Okay, so I'm gonna do this side, then I'm gonna trim these pieces and glue them in, and then we'll be back. Okay guys, here we are. Now I took a little bit off of each side here, on each side of this piece, and across the bottom. And this is very forgiving, this piece is, especially if you use the same color hinge as you did your papers. You're not gonna be able to see. If you, if you happen to cut it just a little bit too short, it will be fine. If I rest this down in the bottom, you can see I slightly took too much off the bottom, but I'm gonna pull that up even at the top. You're never gonna see that down there. Okay, so um, just go slow. Again, I am taking off just little bitty slivers at a time. Um, and again, it's gonna depend on the paper that you use. So I'm gonna do this side, I'm gonna glue it on, because if I bring it over here, it may not line up, but it does. So if you wanna use both of them and use one as a guide as to how much to trim off the other, you can. All right, so let's glue those two pieces in and come back. Okay guys, here we are and we're gonna do our divider. I recut these because I couldn't see my score lines and the score lines are very important. So I've changed them in the file to draw, okay? The bolder the better, it's not gonna be seen so it doesn't matter what color you pick just as long as you can see it on your paper. Next you're going to get, you're gonna fold all of these pieces here for your inside and you are going to place one on each side of this, just like this, okay? So that when it's finished, it'll look like this, and you're gonna put 
one on the front, one on the back. You're going to do the same thing on this end. And you're going to do that to both panels. You're going to do the same thing to this panel. You're going to glue one on this side, one on this side. Oops, let me get it right. So that it looks like this, okay? And then you're going to do this side the same way. And then you're going to glue this panel on here. And then you're going to glue one here, okay? So it looks just like this once it's complete, except you have the two wings on this side too. And then these two panels look the same way. Don't glue these on yet. Uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about those. But you can go ahead, once you have your wings on these, you can glue your big panel onto those as well. So your wings will be sticking out on that one also.
Okay, guys, that took about maybe 15 minutes total, depending on how fast you work. Um, I think I actually did it in about 12, but we'll say 15 minutes. So now we're going to do this very important step. And we need to make sure that we have these four lines in the right place when they go on there. So make sure that you've got your panels where they need to go because one is going to be this panel and one is going to be this panel. And we need to make sure that our score lines are exactly in the same places on both sides because there is a difference in the sizes, okay? So just make sure that you're keeping this. Um, and I'm just going to put a little pencil mark here at the top. This is going to be the top of this one. And this is going to be the top of this one, okay? And I can erase that later. So that way you know that this is top and this is top because they're going to go in like this, all right? And that's going to matter. So now we're just going to glue these panels on just like we did the others. We're almost done, guys. Uh, seriously, th for a chipboard project, this is pretty quick. Mine cut pretty quick. Um, I'm going to say I cut it in an hour. Now, I spent half the day picking out papers and then printing them, but for the most part, it's quick. Once you have your paper picked, you're good to go. Oop, and I forgot to trim that one. I'm just going to give it a fold there. It'll be okay. You may need to trim yours again. I have to trim mine, but you may not. And if you trim them, these two pieces, you wanna to trim together, okay? So make sure that you trim them and get them identical. So stack them and trim them both at the same time. And I'm just gonna do the same thing to this one as I did that one, just so that mine stay even. All I did was basically move my score on the hinge when I did that. It'll fit better if you trim it, but you can't work around it. So now I have that. Those on even. And that's pretty darn close. I'm gonna go with that. Gonna roll it down. And I'm just gonna take my finger and give that a new score area. So now when I lay these pieces and I get them flat, my score lines or my draw lines are going to line up. And that's where this comes in because we have to now glue these panels here. And this is when it's best if your paper matches, um, your, your hinges match instead of doing a solid color. Sometimes I like to do a solid color base or hinge and then do a pattern paper, but on this, it is one of the reasons why I chose. And now your chipboard is going to line up directly on the line, okay? So we're gonna get that there. And then you're gonna have to come over and look at this side too. Make sure you've got that chipboard lined up perfectly on that score line so that you know it's straight, okay? Once you've got it straight, you're gonna rub it down. And we're just gonna set that to the side and give it a second to dry. And we're gonna take this one and we're gonna go on the opposite line just so that has time to sit and dry for a second, okay? You wanna make sure it's good and sturdy. Making sure I've got my lines right. I don't want to be gluing two on the same line. Okay, so this line. And it doesn't matter which side you do. That, I couldn't do that again if I tried. My paper's lining up that way. Make sure you get that chipboard piece in there. Get Go right down that middle and get that on there. That's gonna help hold it and steady it. And 
And again, the chipboard goes on the line. I just oops, dropped it. Chipboard's on the line there, on the line there, and then we're gonna give those a rub. And you can see moving it around, that's why I marked which one was the top of which. That's gonna help me. So I've got my pencil mark here showing me that that's the top, and I've got my pencil mark here showing me that's the top. So I should have something looking just like that, okay? We're gonna give that a second to dry. Give yours time to dry. I'm because of time purposes. I'm just going to go ahead with mine, and we're going to glue this hinge. We're going to glue this one. Okay, just like that. And it may be easier if you stand them at this point. But now we're going to line that chipboard up directly on those lines. Sorry if my head gets in the way. And you can see how that popped off. So you want to make sure that you're lining it up. You want to get it good and straight. And then I'm going to hold that and flip it over and make sure that my base is on that line. I can see my line right there at the edge. That looks pretty good. that one's off. There we go. I want to make sure to slide that over. That's why you want plenty of glue as well, so you still have some sliding room. That looks pretty good. I mean, because I can still see my line there. Okay, and now this is tricky. You want to leave it there, and you'll want to go and smooth down those hinges. And I know you guys can't see that, but all I'm doing is rubbing down those hinges. And I'm going to flip it over and rub down the others. And just rub them all. I know you've already done one of them once on each side, but it's better than missing something. And so that's going to tie in, and that's going to be our center divider for this project. Now, I am going to give this a few minutes to dry because I don't want this shifting. I'm going to let that dry. And while that dries, we're going to do the outside of the box. So we're going to bring the box back in. Okay. And we are going to put on our decor pieces here. Make sure we don't have to trim. These should not need trimming at all since they are the outside pieces. So we're just going to glue them down. Get those edges really, really well, guys. Give yourself enough glue. If it squishes out, then you know you got enough glue and it's gonna help seal those edges. And it's going to give you some sliding power, especially if you're using a craft paper or a paper that grips really quick. You want that sliding area. This is the most important part. You want to get that part up there good and even, and the rest should follow. Okay, and then again... I'm just going to put my hand under it and support it and give that a little rub. And then I'm going to flip it over and rub it from the inside just to get that good and pressed. Okay. Just like that. And then you're just going to glue the other four panels. Once I've done that, we'll come back and we'll put the insert in. Okay, guys, I have done all of that on the outside. I am still giving this a minute to dry, but while that does that, I've got my 3 8 inch dowel here, and I have inserted it, 
and marked where I want to cut it. Now this is just my end that tells me what size the dowel is, so I'm going to actually cut and mark the other end, so if I need the dowel later. And don't worry about this, your chipboard is going to try to curl in a little bit, and that's okay guys. Um, it's going to do that because of the wetness of the glue, and that's why I said uh, you don't want, but we can, I am going to, you can paint this, you can stain it. I think I'm going to be wrapping mine with like a thread, um, but I haven't decided yet. So, and that's going to allow that to pull in and straighten up. You can also put a little dab of hot glue on the side, and that will keep it from curling in as it dries, okay? Um, you can even lay it flat for a day or two, and it will flatten itself back out. You'll have to do each side, but it will. Um, so I've got my cap on that end and I've pulled it in flush. So I know that that's where that needs to be. And I'm just kind of bending that to keep it kind of straight while it's drying. And I'm gonna hold and give, make sure that my handles are where I want them to be. You've got to hold this end in. And then once you have this, hold it. And then I know that I need about a quarter of an inch for my cap to go on. And we are going to wood glue those on or hot glue them, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use wood glue. So I know I need to trim that there and give myself some room. I'm going to measure this and give you guys a measurement on it. It is, let's see. Where I'm going to cut... So that you'll have a good idea but it's going to depend on your cap and how deep your cap is okay so i just want to throw that out there you can't go exact you need to always measure it let me find my pencil mark there it is and i was right when i said earlier 11 inches so the way to determine it and i'm right at 11 inches okay so the way you're going to determine again Place your cap on the end and mark it, okay? And I've got one. I used a Sharpie on this just so I could see it. This would need to be painted or sanded off if you're going to be using it in a project where it will show. But you're going to mark that. And then you're going to measure this. So you know that the box is 10 and a half wide. So a quarter inch, I measured those earlier, a quarter inch, um added to that's gonna be 11 inches. And when I marked it, just to double check it, it came out at 11. So you know where you have to cut that dowel. And I am going to go cut mine. I generally, for one like this, I just use scissors. I'm not gonna use these, these are my fabric scissors. And just keep turning it with a pair of, I call utility scissors, and that will snip it off enough that I can use it. So I've just put that in my utility scissors right on my mark and I'm just going to keep turning it in those scissors and you can see it's starting to cut through. Dowels are not very difficult to cut. The, the bigger they are the more difficult they are but generally a pair of scissors will do it. And then I could probably snap that right there and then just trim off the jagged piece. Now I'm going to do a dry fit with my dowels, got one there. And I have another one over here somewhere that doesn't have ink on it. There we go. And then that one. So that is perfect. It's going to pull these in straight once I do them. I'm good with that. So you can go ahead and glue this now if you want. I would wait until I got this part in, but you've got this ready to go. And I will show you how I do mine, whatever I choose to do with it. Um, I will show that to you so that you will know and you can finish yours the same if you want. But again, you can paint it, you can stain it, you can do whatever you like. And I think this is gonna be dry enough now. We're just going to push those in and it's gonna be a snug fit, okay? And you don't wanna glue this yet because we're gonna, we need to do a mark. Because I set this up to do three inches of plates. Um, and if you want to change it, you can. And this is a Solo cup or a Dixie cup or something. But I wanted it to be able to fit in the front. And you can see that it hangs up on that side. 
So if it fits here, I just want to make sure that I've got everything in. Now you can glue this in or you can just set it in like you want. And if you're just going to set it in like that, then you don't need your hinges on this side. So when you go to glue them, you can just do uh, eliminate that and just glue your panels on, if that makes sense. Don't glue the hinges on those ends on your big pieces. Okay, so I'm going to, I did get that at the top, I hope. I'm just gonna pull that out. Make sure I got my top piece in because that's the way I glued it. See, yep, there it is. I had it right, I think. But I'm just gonna dry fit it one more time. Make sure that my cup fits. Get it lined up. And it does, it sits right down to the bottom and comes right up to the top of the edge so that you don't have any problem even getting that last cup out, okay? Your napkins can go here, your tablecloth can go in here. Knives, forks, spoons. You can also put straws in here with your napkins and then your plates back here. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got everything even and that it's pretty good on both sides without it hanging up. And now I am going to just get my, there we go. I'm not even gonna take it out. I'm just gonna fold back that panel and I'm gonna glue it. Because you can get back there and squeeze some glue in behind that chipboard but I'm gonna do that on all four, okay? I'm not gonna rub them yet. I'm just gonna stick them, okay? And these are gonna be tricky because you don't have a whole lot of room. It gets tighter in there as you get to that center. And now that that's had a second to sit, I'm going to go and rub that down. And I do want some squishy glue out of there because I want that edge to seal up really good. And that hinge is pretty much hidden. You gotta be looking for it to see it. I'm gonna lay this down and rub that one. Okay, I'm gonna leave those on the inside to last. That way I give these time to dry and then those will be easier to deal with without shifting. Just gonna fold those back. You could fold these back before you put it in here as well probably make it a little bit easier. Super cute is this. Great idea, Pat. She showed me a photo of a wooden caddy and I kind of went off that and added an extra compartment because she just, the one that she showed me just had the three and the one side. And I was like, eh, when I go on picnic, I like to have the, the straws and the silverware and the cups and the napkins and the tablecloth, the whole thing with me. And again, you can see how my handle's up just a little bit here, maybe. But I, you can put a book on that, let it dry overnight, and it, it'll flatten itself back out. But if you don't want to wait, like I said, a little dab of hot glue to hold it in when you put your rod in there, and it will be good to go. All right. Now, for these little guys... And you just want to really, on the inside ones here, you just want to get the edges of that paper just so it doesn't lift up, okay? 
because the others have it secured in place. So right on these, you're just getting the paper edge. Got my paper off just a little bit on that one, but that's okay. I can, if your paper's off just a little bit, you can trim that down with a true control knife. I'm just bending it just to remind me. And if I do the gold flakes, it's not gonna show anyway. And I'm, I don't know if I wanna do those gold flakes. I think it's pretty good like it is. Just making sure I didn't miss a tab there, did I? Oh, I got that one. those back so I can get in there. Just getting the edges of that paper really good. Have your glue squish out then you know you got all the edges on that one but you can, you can it's a pretty good size compartment you can get your hand in there and i'm going to load this up with picnic stuff so you guys can see all right and i have this mine set up for my plates in the back my silver in the or plasticware in the middle my cups and napkins in the front that way the plates and all you can see them this way so it's a appealing as well i did have some little feet and i think i'm going to add those on give me just a second to grab those i got these at hobby lobby as well over in their wood section they're just little bread tacks i'm gonna have to put these in a container later these are the, it's item 1335074, and it's just an antique brass tacks. doesn't give a size on them, but they've got feet and everything else. If you want to do decorative trim on them, they've got metal trim guys that you can put on here, and I'm just going to place one in each corner catching all those chipboards there i don't think it came through you want to make sure that you get it in the corner and not into the middle of your board if you do that and that's just going to give it a nice little finish we're going into where all of those chipboards intersect together just going to press it in This is where your bottom and the sides and all come together. It's a little harder to get in there than you think it is. There we go. And now it has its little feet on it. And that'll keep it from dragging and scraping up your paper. You could even Mod Podge this if you wanted to, just to make it, um, just to seal your paper up. You could do that. If you're afraid it might get wet or something like that, or damp, or you want to wash it down with a damp cloth at times. How stinking cute is this? Awesome idea, Pat. Awesome idea. All right. So, now I have to decide before I make this permanent what I want to do. But that is basically the completion of it. I will come back once I decide. I'm going to go and look through my craft stash, see what I have on hand, and how I want to finish out my handle. And then I will come back and we will wrap up the video. Okay, guys, I've decided that I want to do like a jute wrap on my handle. So with my caps on, okay, and this 
and holding it, keeping that straight, I'm going to mark a pencil mark on that dowel on both ends. Okay. And then I'm just going to remove the dowel. Just going to put those in there so I don't lose them. And now I'm just going to take hot glue and I'm going to glue it right there at the start. And then I'm just going to start wrapping, keeping it nice and tight all the way till I get to the end and I'm going to hot glue it there. Okay, guys, I am waiting on this to dry. I used the Deco Art Metallics and just did a um, glorious gold is what I used. Um, and I'm letting these dry. Um, you can, I've got it mine on a dowel, so I'm just going to let it sit there and dry. And I've got the other one sitting here. And once those are dry, we're going to place, I've got my jute on there. We're going to place those in, and then we're going to glue those ends on right there. Okay? And again, you can see that how that's pulled that up straight. Once you get that cap glued on there, those are going to straighten back out if yours curled like mine did. Okay. So I've got a little cup of water here just in case I need it to keep my brush good. But I'm using the Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. And this goes on, you're just going to paint it on and it, stay, it dries clear and it stays tacky. Okay, and you can use this with or without heat. And I showed you the, the gold flakes that I'm going to use. And I, the one I have is a multi-pack and I'm just going to be really careful. You don't want to sneeze around this. I've got some on a plate here. Um, and that is ready to go. So I've already got mine poured out and I'm using the multicolor because I didn't want all bright gold. So that with, I liked it with those little bit of uh, copper and blue tones. And this is just a thick gel. And I'm just gonna dip my brush in it. You don't need a ton. And I'm just gonna go over the edge. And I know that this is the front of mine. So I'm just gonna start at the front and we're just going to brush on some gel right on these edges. And I'm making sure that I clean off as I go. You will need a baby wipe because this stuff is really, really, really sticky. And I'm just dabbing. could probably get by with a smaller brush too. But I'm not getting much at all on that brush. And I'm just going to cover those edges. And it takes just a few minutes to dry. This is fun to do on cards as well. So I, you see what I'm doing, and I'm just going to go around um, and just paint all of my raw edges. And then I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, guys, usually you can just put this on, but the way that this is made, I am just going to be picking and placing. And this can be a little bit messy, um, so you may want to cover your surface. I just use a dry chip brush or paint brush, whatever you want to call it, um, when I'm done. And I will dump this out on my desk, put it back in the plate, and then I will put it back into... Um, my jar so you can just get in there and play you want to rub on it and get it in there you can pick up your other flakes that's a lot of rose gold so i'm just going to break it up over on my plate with the other stuff i want to get some of those other colors in with it so play around with it this one has different variated colors and i'm just sticking it Everywhere that it, it's going to stick to that gel, all you want to do is just kind of gently rub it. All of these pieces off the edge, they'll come back off. You don't have to worry about it. You can paint your edges if you prefer, but I just think this is so much fun. I love playing with the go foil. I haven't done it in a while. It's been a long time. And I saw it in the drawer and I was like, you know, I bought that and I just never opened it and used it those variegated colors. It has like some blues and the gold, the rose gold. 
And if you run across a place that still feels sticky, make sure that you go back and stick some to that. But I'm just going to finish this. I'm going to complete doing this. I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole thing. I want to keep the video as quick as possible for you guys so that you can play with your project. And then we'll come back and I will show photos um, of the finished product. Again, all I'm going to do is put my dowels in here once I finish this and glue them on and that will complete the box. Um, so that's all you guys have to do. That's the last step after you've done your edges. And you can do your handle first, but then you'll, it'll be in your way when you're doing something like this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Please give a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.